and today we're talking about ProCam 8. Hopefully this quick overview will help answer some questions you have about this application. We'll start out looking at the user interface, the functions that are available for you in video, and then look at some pros and some cons. So if you're looking for manual controls for better video and are willing to pay what is essentially the price of a burger, ProCam 8 might be what you're looking for. And stick around because ProCam 8 has a few interesting options that aren't usually found on other apps. And one in particular has changed the way I think about framing shots. So let's begin. This is what the ProCam 8 interface looks like when you open up the application. Here at the top, we have an indicator bar that essentially all apps will have, and it shows you the settings you're about to film with. For example, I'm set to 30 frames per second, 4K resolution, my flash is off, I have automatic focus and exposure, I've used just under half of my memory, and I have just about full battery life. This can really come in handy before you press the record button. But let's look over here on the left. At the top left, we have that camera icon. If you tap on that, it's going to switch to the selfie camera. Right below that, we have that 1X with the camera. Now I'm filming on my iPhone 11 Pro, which means I have three cameras in the back. And if we click on this icon, we can see that I have a choice of my telephoto lens, my wide angle lens, and my ultra wide. Now, right below that, we have an M, and this is our manual control area. It's really important for this particular application, but let's skip over that and go to the bottom two before we get into the good stuff. Okay. Right under the M, we have the Bluetooth icon. Now, if we click on that, we can connect external Bluetooth microphones such as AirPods if you have those available, if you wanna use those. And right below that, we have a flash option. We can put on flash, we can put it off, and we can have auto. All right, to get into the good stuff, we're gonna click on the M, and if you notice on the right, we have other options available. Let's start by going from the left to the right. What we see first here is a plus sign, then a sort of gauge icon, the one X icon, and then a negative icon. What this does is essentially control zoom. You can click once or twice on the plus like this, and it'll incrementally make adjustments by zooming in. You can do the same with the negative. You can also hold it down and just smoothly zoom in. Now, what this feature does is if you zoom in, let's do that just a little bit more. Let's go to 2.0. If we click on the 1X button, it'll automatically zoom back to the original dimensions and click, and it's zooming out as we speak. I'm not touching anything. You can control the speed by clicking on this gauge and it goes from one up to five. Five will increase the speed of the zoom out. Now of more significance is what we have a little bit toward the right. Let's go ahead and click the very top and you'll notice that everything goes white. Now the E stands for exposure, the F is for focus, and the WB is white balance, the L means locked. Right now, our exposure, focus, and white balance are all locked. Actually, all settings are locked. And you know they're locked because they're in white. However, if you want automatic adjustments, you can just simply click once on the screen. And this indicates the AF has changed to yellow. Automatic focus is now on. And if you double tap, now we have both automatic focus and exposure. Notice at the bottom, the AE has a little line next to it. That means we're specifically adjusting the exposure. If I click on a F here, the line is moved and we're specifically adjusting focus. If I put my hand here, we can focus on my hand or focus on the cactus. You have the same options with ISO. We can click on ISO and change the ISO, which essentially will change your exposure. Just as clicking on the one over 40, which is our shutter speed, you can adjust your shutter speed, which also has an effect on exposure. But again, to go back to automatic, you can just simply double tap. To get out of manual, just go back and click the M on the left. Now let's go to the right bottom. 
Whether you've just taken a photo or you've just taken video, this is where you will access your camera roll. Just above that, we have an arrow. Click on that. Let's come back to that in just a moment. Right above the arrow, we have the record button. And above that, we have a camera icon. Now I'm going to take a picture. And as I take a picture, you'll notice at the very bottom right, that picture will be displayed as it goes into my camera roll. And there it is. Okay, let's go back to this little arrow here and see what we have. Now this is kind of interesting. When we scroll up and down, a lot of these functions are really for photography. Your 3D option here allows you to make what ProCam calls wiggle grams, which are animated images that have a 3D effect by looping back and forth from two different perspectives of a scene. Portrait mode allows you to generate a depth of field, but only in post. Slow shutter mode allows you to capture light trails. Burst mode will allow you to capture multiple back-to-back -back images in a fraction of time. Here, this is our traditional camera. Here is video mode. Currently, we are in video mode, and we know that because the icon is turned yellow. And at the bottom, we have time-lapse mode, which will allow you to create a video time-lapse based on several photos taken over time. You can set the intervals in the settings, which we'll see in a moment. Next, in the center here, this is where we're going to choose a combination of frames per second and our resolution. Now, what is different from other applications is you'll be able to choose each of these independently. However, here, you're going to have to scroll up and down to choose what combination you want. At the bottom, we have our frames per second in VGA mode. Now, this is 480p, which is really low resolution. ProCam 8 has said that it's here just as a courtesy if you're running out of memory. So you're probably not going to use VGA. You do have the option of 720p, it's still low resolution. Most people are going to choose to film in 1080p or 4K. 1080p is great if you wanna to upload to YouTube, for example, but if you want higher resolution, you probably want to film at 4K. The interesting thing here is that at the very top, we have 4K Max. Now, 4K Max will come in 24 frames per second, 25 and 30 frames per second. However, you see it has a little lock icon. If we click on one of these, here we have the options for 4K Max Video and the option for 4K Max Time Lapse. In order to gain access to these, I'll click on one of these here, it's going to cost a little bit of money. For example, 4K Max Video is $4.99. However, if you choose to purchase this, apparently you'll get 10% higher resolution than regular 4K, three times the quality of regular 4K video at up to 150 megabits per second, 20% wider angle view than regular 4K, significantly superior low light performance, and apparently the highest quality stereo audio. If we click back and click on 4K Max Time Lapse, we have pretty much the same abilities except specifically for time lapses. However, as far as I'm concerned, regular 4K should do the job. Now, toward the left, these are our grid lines. Most of these are not available for most applications. Yep. Now, if you've ever used a camera, if you've ever used video, you probably have heard of the rule of thirds, and that's what we have right here. These are our rule of third guides. What's interesting is that with the rule of thirds, in addition, we have leveling options for the horizontal and the vertical. And you can notice as I go, as I tilt forward and I tilt backward, the leveling changes just as I tilt left and right. These guides could very well come in handy. So I really like this option. In addition to that, just under the rule of thirds guidelines, we have something a little more technical. This multiple grid line overlay might be interesting if you're looking for more exact placement of your shots or for more technical composition. Right after that, we have a golden ratio grid. 
What's interesting is that this golden ratio for composition is arguably more pleasing to the eye by overlaying a logarithmic spiral over your subjects. I really like this option because it's based on patterns that often show up in nature and may very well be hardwired in our DNA to be more pleasing to the eye. In the future, I plan to frame my shots more based on the golden ratio than the rule of thirds. However, they both have their own time and place depending on the situation. What are your thoughts? Golden ratio or rule of thirds? And at the very bottom, we have our horizontal level. As we move it side to side, it'll adjust, but not for forward and backward. This is a bit redundant as you can use the horizontal and vertical level simultaneously when in the rule of thirds grid displayed right here. And finally, we'll go up to this icon, the SET button, which is our settings. Now it starts out with photos. We're only covering videos today, so we're gonna skip over that. Next is video, but we'll get right back to that in a second. Okay. You can set custom profiles and recall them through Siri if you like. Next, we have our info. Here you can find out more information about the application and the producers of this application. And on the right, we have an interesting option that I have not seen on other phones. We have 13 different languages that we can choose from. Of course, we're in English at the moment, but if you happen to speak any of these other languages, you're in luck. The languages that are offered are French, German, Italian, Spanish, Portuguese, Russian, Turkish, Japanese, two forms of Chinese, Korean, and I believe Arabic. But let's just stick to English. Okay, so the settings that we're going to be most interested in are here under video. We can turn on and off our audio meter. Stabilization can be turned on and off. Our video Kodak. H.264 is for most compatible and H.265 is high efficiency. We have video framing guides. We have a video timer, which will go up to 60 seconds. We have a time lapse intervals, which will go up to 300 seconds or five minutes. We have a time lapse start delay, which is up to 60 seconds. And we have stop time lapse at output video duration, which can be up to five minutes. And you can also adjust the brightness of your screen when taking a time lapse because it'll save on battery life. Now the other functions or options at the bottom, uh, date stamp, date format, location, copyright, stamp, stamp size, and stamp color. These are all things that I would not be interested in, but if you are, hats off to you. And that's ProCam 8. So what are the pros and cons of ProCam 8 before you commit to that $7.99 app store purchase? It's great for beginners, it's simple, and it gives you more control over your camera. The leveling guides paired with the rule of thirds grid lines can be really helpful. I wish other apps had the same option. The option to level up for the price of $4.99 to 4K video and 4K time lapse is pretty nice. You should get higher resolution and you should have better low light performance. The golden ratio composition option. I really like that as you've already seen. I wish other apps had the same option. 13 languages to choose from. That is definitely a global application. In addition to video, the photo mode is really robust and gives you lots of options if you're into photography. There are no separate focus and exposure reticles. Those are these two things here that you'll find on other apps like Filmic Pro. Instead, you only have the one tap option where the yellow circle appears. For more on reticles, check out my video here, link in the description. ProCam 8 also does not offer the option to film in log. This essentially gives you more control over your highs and lows of exposure, thus keeping more data or minimizing data loss. It also gives you the option of more control if you're going to color correct and color grade in post. 
However, for ProCam 8, if you're a beginner, this might not be something that would interest you, at least not yet. Although we do find the option to pull zoom, it would make more sense if we had the option to pull focus. This is something that videographers and filmmakers use on a regular basis. Why is it not here on ProCam 8? Good question. And finally, of course, the elephant in the room with 4K max video. You have to pay an additional price for 4K max resolution and 4K max time lapse. ProCam 8 might have just been better off by including both of these in the initial price. What about you? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Also, check out one of these two videos right here and always stay focused.